everyone uh, today for our office hour. We have Teresa Notare, um, Assistant Director for Natural Family Planning with us at USCCB. And she and Alice Heinzen, a good friend and collaborator uh, for our committee for marriage, family, life, and youth. She is joining us as well. And Alice has a wealth of experience in natural family planning as well as other ministry areas um, and has been um, a close collaborator with Teresa for many years in this area of pastoral care. So we're grateful to both of you for the time you're making for us today um, in, uh, and, and uh, whatever you have to share regarding this week's natural family planning and the theme, which is called the joy of love, a theme that we are well familiar with by now. <laughs> so thank you both for, for joining us. Thanks for having us, Julia. Let's begin with the prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heart of Jesus, burning furnace of love, inflame our hearts for love of you and our neighbors. Send us your Holy Spirit that we may be animated by his love and give glory to God the Father in our lives. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, in talking with uh, Julia uh, about um, an interesting and useful conversation for the Catholic Diocesan Directors of Marriage and Family Life Ministry, uh, we put our heads together and realized that uh, unpacking this theme of natural family planning, we have called the joy of love, um, and, and looking at the nuts and bolts of how, how one programs such beautiful truths, um, that it would be good to talk about integrating natural family planning ministry in marriage ministry. And uh, for those of you um, who don't know me, and I'm thinking more of our virtual viewers, because I see in our uh, participants today who are all diocesan marriage and family life directors that most of you here uh, do know me and my work as the assistant director of natural family planning, uh, the natural family planning program at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Um, I, I get to work with people in the dioceses and the programming that we have right now, um, it's, there's a great variety out there uh, and I want to say that the good news is in many dioceses, natural family planning programming is uh, integrated into marriage ministry. In the old days, when I first started back in the 1980s, uh, the natural family planning ministry was very much a fringe ministry and coordinators used to um, administer their work from their kitchen tables. Uh, then they were mostly volunteers. And at this point in time, um, they're not. They, they tend to be either full-time or part-time staff. Most of the uh, diocesan NFP coordinators are the marriage and family life directors. And the reason why I wanted Alice Heinzen with us is because she had, uh, to me, the perfect journey. Uh, she and her <laughs> husband, Jeff, are lay ministers in the Diocese of La Crosse for years. I've known them. And at one point, Jeff was the marriage and family life director for the Diocese of La Crosse, and Alice was the NFP coordinator. And then when Jeff moved on to a different ministry, Alice became both the director of marriage and family life, as well as uh, NFP. So Alice and I also thought, okay, let's see what we can hone in on real fast for you guys. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit and then open it up for questions. And we came up with three points. Uh, we're going to take a look at catechesis about God's design for human sexuality, chastity, married love, and the gift of life, as well as the value of children and the whole respect life um, uh, idea, right? So there's that as a, a huge pillar of uh, this ministry. And then there's number two, providing education on the specifics of NFP, fertility awareness, the importance of male and female complementarity. And then number three, the role that the Bishop's Conference can play in supporting all of you, especially through our standards for diocesan NFP ministry. So just looking at top, topic one right now, catechesis, um, uh, Alice has a, a beautiful experience of leading with church teaching that um, I'd like her to share uh, with all of you. Well, Teresa, thank you. And honestly, it's so good to be back with all of you directors. Um, I've been retired for two years already um, and just in time for COVID to hit. So um, it's, it's, um, it's really nice to get back in the saddle um, with all of you and, and hopefully give you some uh, practical uh, information on how you can enhance your 
ministries to marriage and family life, especially by highlighting God's plan for human sexuality, male-female complementarity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> how did it all roll in Wisconsin? Well, I have to give total credit to um, then Bishop Raymond Burke, who we all know is now Cardinal Burke, um, but uh, he, a uh, homegrown priest, you know, that went off, came back, became our bishop. Uh, when he was named our bishop, uh, he had in his heart um, a real love for the for natural family planning and fertility awareness, et cetera. And he really wanted that to be the uh, uh, core of the catechesis, an understanding of God's plan, the core of everything that we did in marriage and family life. So the first thing that we did, and this was back in the 80s and uh, the 90s, is that he said, I want you to look at all of the marriage prep and marriage enrichment programming that is currently available. And as we know, back then in the 80s and 90s, what we offered for marriage and family you know, ministries um, tended to be a little more secular than really embracing all of God's plan. And so we did an exhaustive search under his direction. And basically at the end, when we came up with our report for him, he basically said, mm, I don't think I like anything that's out there. So you guys are gonna rewrite it all. Well, hello, you know, it's just like, yeah, let's just be a publishing company here and pull it all together. But by the grace of God and the Holy Spirit, absolutely, that's what we did. And uh, I credit our success in getting a vibrant NFP program moving because we started with the big picture. We took a look from the 40,000 foot roll, you know, site and we looked down upon the whole thing. And I think everybody on the call is aware of the fact that when you look at marriage and family life ministry, you're looking at what we call the remote preparation, you're looking at the proximate preparation, you're looking at the immediate, and you're looking at the aftercare of marriage. So most of us sometimes think, oh, if I just get that marriage prep down, we're good. Not in our diocese. Our bishop said, you got to look at it all. And so we really did. And from that, we crafted a number of goals. We really put together a strategic plan. Now, why did we do that? It's because before Jeff and I, there was this woman who um, had been in, in conversation with Teresa and the, you, the standards for the NFP program had just been written. She was a very sick woman with cancer. You, you, you can't make these stories up, people. You can't. This is just whole Holy Spirit driven. She was dying and called Jeff in, not me, just Jeff, and said, we're going to write this NFP thing and, and get it all going. Um, and unbeknownst to us, she applied to start the standards. And then she died. And we get this letter from Teresa that says, hey, um, you guys, the clock is ticking. Let's get this going. And we're like, what the heck are we doing? So we had to pull all of the NFP people together, et cetera. And with the assistance of all methodologies, we were so green back then, we didn't know our, our uh, parents of these organizations might be fighting with one another. We didn't know that. We just pulled together a plan. And, and, and to this day, we still operate under the plan that we wrote back in the, you know, in the, 90, the early 90s. All right, so it was under the director and a direction. Um, uh, Bishop Burke came in slightly after that, but we had already started the plan. We rewrote everything, and we still operate on that plan today in the Diocese of La Crosse. Okay, because it was the big plan. I will say that when it comes to getting a a, a vibrant, flourishing NFP program, the best thing you can do is first assess. Where are you remotely, approximately, immediate, and aftercare with God's plan for human sexuality? Yeah, and if I could jump in, um, this is hard work to oh, have yeah. that big picture in mind, especially beginning with the why of natural family planning, which of course takes in exactly what I said, the catechesis about God's design. Um, interestingly, the um, uh, Vatican um, has recently come out with a marriage catechumenate, which also emphasizes the remote preparation. 
So if we want our people to understand um, in marriage preparation why they should not be using contraception, but what ethical methods are available to them in the methods of natural family planning, and why go through the effort of all that work of learning about their um, fertility, their combined fertility, and the window of fertility to you know, discern to avoid pregnancy or to achieve pregnancy. Why should they go through that effort unless they understand the deep truth and the meaning of this? And how are we going to um, really plant seeds of conversion just in marriage prep? We know that it can happen, it, ha it is happening now, but it's very difficult work. We have to keep the big picture in mind and start with the children. We have to start with uh, the adolescents, the children, again, age appropriate, fertility and chastity education uh, with the parents uh, is, is critical. Uh, there have, have been dioceses over the years that have done things like um, chastity um, and fertility sessions, mother-daughter, father-son programs, which are one-shot educational interventions, but they get the conversation rolling. But also there have been those diocesan directors who've realized that they had to work with the parents more because the parents come from a contraceptive mentality and uh, don't understand, uh, again, the why of all of this. It's almost as if people have forgotten that they were made in God's image and likeness and that human sexuality is a deep um, uh, gift that God has given men and women from which we relate to each other. But then the virtue of chastity is that which helps us create those boundaries so that we know when to use that gift to its fullest, which we understand from scripture is in marriage, right? And through the church thinking through the generations of tradition with a capital T of the Holy Spirit helping us to uh, unpack the meaning uh, uh, of these teachings. Uh, and so finding the right formats, educational formats, to train your leaders in your parishes or uh, train your clergy and, um, uh, and, and your um, healthcare providers about the why of all of this, to get them to reclaim this truth, it, it's critically important. Um, just this week during NFP week, I had two difficult emails that came into me and they were because of two interviews that I gave to reporters. And the both reporters identified themselves to be as Catholic. One admitted that he was a lapsed Catholic and didn't know much. And the other was a Catholic who was actually using natural family planning. And the, the one article that the man wrote um, uh, who was lapsed Catholic, well, a, a really angry woman um, had read it and, and wrote an exceptionally nasty email to me that was filled with hatred. And, and of course she made it personal because that's what people do today, which is not acceptable. But um, you can almost understand where her anger is coming from because she had complete misinformation, complete false uh, understandings of what the Catholic Church is teaching and why. So there are still people out there who think that the Catholic Church thinks sex is bad when sex is really holy and good. Uh, they think that the Catholic Church wants people to have as many children as possible. And some people still think there's even a population problem out there when we have industrialized countries, especially showing um, uh, population implosions, right? So, so the amount of vitriol that is still out there and, um, and anger, and it's all displaced because the church has not consistently had leaders finding the ways to teach the truth clearly and beautifully. And again, what Alice was saying, um, appropriate to the remote or the proximate, um, the, you know, the uh, aftercare. I, I, we always have to phrase things and uh, format things to fit the audience that we're working with. Um, but, but we have to ensure that we've got the right language and that we have the training going on for our people. And then of course, casting the net for uh, the wider. Um, uh, just paying, paying attention to time. Alice, do you have anything you wanna to add to that? Well, so, so I know it's a lot of work. I'm not gonna disagree with Teresa when she says that, um, but this is what I am gonna tell all of you directors that are out there right now. Holy cow, you have so many resources that you have now that we did not have, all right? 
Example, you can go to the USCCB. Thank you guys out in Washington, DC for putting up a website that's actually got great useful information on it. If you go under USCCB and I think you look at uh, topics, okay? You can look under there and you can get all the natural family planning stuff. You can get all the human sexuality stuff. You can get, you can look at it all and it's great stuff. Great stuff. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's out there now. You can go to the NFP vendors of services. You know, who, whoever gives the, 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 the endorsed programs that the USCCB backs, oh my gosh, they have got great stuff out there. Back when we began, most of the marriage enrichment programs would not even address anything on their, you know, on any of their materials. Now they've got some pretty robust um, uh, websites and oh my gosh, they're actually talking about this stuff. So this is really important. So, so the challenge that I would give you to help you really set up a good flourishing NFP program is, does your website, does your information connect all these dots together from what the USCCB provides, from what your diocese provides? Can someone come to your website and quickly find a good catechetical overview of God's plan? Is it easy to access? When you have your um, respect to life programming, different office probably for some of you, does it make it easy to find the catechetical information that's there? Whatever parenting stuff, do your Catholic schools have easy access to this good resource? You know, and, and say, Alice, I'm glad that you mentioned that about Catholic schools because we often forget as we're trying to scramble through all of our activities in our own ministries um, that we should be reaching out to provide um, this type of education to others. And so have you thought about doing a training in church teaching on these issues for your teachers in Catholic schools or your DREs in the parishes? I mean, the DREs really need to get on board with this. Uh, certainly, um, uh, they're the ones doing and, and, and shaping the catechesis in the parishes. And, and again, if you, if you know which chastity programs or fertility and chastity programs that you like. So for example, um, I think it was in the Archdiocese of St. Paul, uh, Minneapolis, uh, many years ago, uh, they brought in the FEM natural family planning provider to use uh, FEM teen in their um, high schools. And FEM teen is a, a fertility appreciation program that is based on natural law. Uh, the people who wrote it are all Catholics. Um, it, it, it spells out the truth and meaning of human sexuality um, from a natural law uh, perspective, um, but it doesn't have church teaching in it. So what they had decided at that time was that in certain schools, they were gonna first just start with uh, teen femme, and then they were going to find ways to enhance the church teaching once they got the kids to get their um, you know, their feet wet, right? Uh, just dipping the toes into the pool, right? So that they can see that this was um, uh, logical and, uh, and true. Uh, and then in other schools that uh, they had more robust catechetical programming in, uh, they, they didn't have to do that because they had the church teaching so beautifully placed that when they um, interfaced it with Teen Femme, then it worked out fine. Um, in other schools, they use Dr. Hannah Klaus's Teen Star, which is a year long in a, a school program uh, fertility appreciation curriculum that uh, again, uses science and biology to speak about the truth. So again, the, the schools would have to supplement that with church teaching. And usually whoever was doing the Teen Star would have to, um, a typical format would be to collaborate with the religion teacher in the school. And I think Teen Star even had a component where they brought the parents in ahead of time to talk about these things. Because again, when we're dealing with children and adolescents, we really cannot cut out the parents. The parents really have to be part of the educational process. But right. there are ways to do that. And, um, uh, and I would say jumping from that platform to then point to the education about fertility and uh, natural family planning methods. So the science and methodology of NFP 
we are, as Alice said, in such a good moment in time because all of the NFP providers uh, have professionalized beautifully. Back in the day when I started in the 1980s, they still used flip charts in their um, classrooms or um, overhead projection machines. Uh, and then we thought that we were doing really well when it came up to the carousel slide projector. Um, so, so now we have uh, distance learning through live formats uh, as, as what we're doing right now. Um, we also have uh, canned um, programs that have been developed with, with videos that can be accessed and it can be self-paced for the person studying. Um, and, and all of our NFP providers are absolutely willing to work with a diocese to find ways to provide overview education uh, in introductions to the science and methodology of NFP, as well as specialized full class training for um, the couple. And then we have even organizations like FACS, um, which, is, which stands for um, Fertility Appreciation Collaborative to Teach the Science. The executive director of that is Dr. Marguerite Duane. That organization is devoted to educating um, healthcare professionals, especially targeting family practice doctors about the science and methodology of NFP. And their website, Facts About Fertility, is completely medically based all evidence-based, very professional. One can use that as a resource to refer parents to read it. Uh, if you're doing outreach education to um, healthcare professionals, certainly to even bring in some of Dr. Duane's teachers, which can be live or even virtual. I think the good news about the pandemic is that it finally taught us that we can have effective uh, education when, um, when we're doing it virtually. Uh, but of course, everything has to be well planned and you have to know your resources. And we have all of these resources listed on the Bishop's Conference website. Um, Alice, did you want to say anything about the methodology and science? Um, well, not the methodology methodology and science, but when, it, when we come back to education, um, this is my personal experience. Um, to get your natural family planning uh, ministry really up and running and flourishing, there are a couple things that I think um, are critical for you. And the first one is <clears throat> um, you have to make sure that in your immediate marriage preparation program, that there is a very adequate overview of the catechesis behind that, that part of uh, the teaching has to go in there. Um, uh, in our diocese, uh, the couple's uh, first uh, attend, they have a two hour presentation that's part of that day that they've got. And then they also go through a full course of natural family planning education. Okay, we did get a requirement in place. Now, I will tell you that took us almost 15 years to get in place. Um, again, we were fighting an uphill battle that most of you um, don't have to fight as hard as we we did because we were creating as we were going. But I really think it's critical that you at least educate them both on the catechetical and on the specifics of natural methods within your immediate marriage prep programming. That being said, the second most important thing that has to happen is you have got to get your parents on board. And when I say parent, this is adult education on all of this, okay? How and where do you in your diocese equip parents for their job as primary educators with their kids? This has become more and more critical each year because our schools and our laws by and large are uh, taking the kids away from their parents on this specific information. And, and so as a director, I think it's um, uh, a very valid uh, endeavor is to really look at your religious education programs and then your schools and how are the parents being engaged specifically on the topic of human sexuality, chastity, et cetera. Why is that so critical? It's so critical because most of the parents uh, did not get good formation on those topics when they were growing up. And they have a very secular understanding of all of this. 
Um, so I think it's it's really important to make sure that you do your your best to work with the other offices that are in your curious staff, from Catholic schools to faith formation to respect life, et cetera. And how can you make sure that all of these vibrant resources that are out there are both easily accessible for the parents, but also, I hate the word mandated, but um, you know that they are required to get this education and the earlier you start that with the parents, meaning um, in preschool, uh, et cetera, you're equipping the parents for what's coming. And then, you know, this is going to be a slow roll because you start and then the next year and the next year, and you'll all of a sudden notice a big change at about the five to seven year mark because you've continually equipped and you'll see a change in your parents which then makes a change in your schools, which then makes a change in your parish, et cetera, et cetera. And then makes it really e much easier when these kids get into high school and confirmation and they're starting to think, gee, what's my vocation? Might I get married someday? Oh yeah, there's this thing called natural you know, family planning. And then all of a sudden, gee, they're coming to you for marriage preparation. I mean, we're finally in our diocese at that point of, oh, it's so nice when they come in and they don't even question because they've heard it all the way through. But you got to start at some point. And so it's kind of like a two-pronged approach there. Get it in your immediate and then keep looking backwards and backfilling. I hope that makes sense. Right. Yeah. And, and that leads to the third point of um, help for you. Because you don't need to do this alone. Um, you have so much on your plates already. There are definitely people in your diocese that you can partner with to integrate this education in into uh, marriage ministry and then there's the USCCB and all the NFP national providers that can right. help you in terms of the USCCB's uh, standards for diocesan NFP ministry you should know that we are updating those standards um, we're spelling out church teaching a little bit more fully um, in the section one of the standards and I hope that our administrative board of bishops in September will uh, approve um, the updated document that we have. But right now the document is up on our website and, and it gives you a blueprint of those basic elements that ought to be in diocesan and NFP ministry. And you can see where the overlap will be with general marriage ministry because in order to know why NFP is important because it's a skill set, um, we need to get, again, as I said, know the why. We need to know about um, uh, being made in God's image and likeness and what the meaning of human sexuality is and why the fullness of it should only be uh, celebrated in marriage. And marriage is a vocation. And how are we preparing our people for that vocation, right? So the standards spell that out. Um, and there are ways that you can use it. You can use it very informally by uh, looking at it and thinking, okay, what from here do I already have up and running in my program? What can I add in? What do I need to work on? You could uh, use forms uh, and maybe gather your NFP team or your marriage team uh, to do a self-study, use it as a little bit of a staff retreat kind of thing where you go through things and, and, and try to check the box and figure out how you're gonna troubleshoot developing those weak uh, points, uh, strengthening those weak points in the diocesan program. And then you could also do it uh, in a third way, which is more formal by inviting a third party reviewer, where then you would contact me and I would get a board review together of uh, two people who would um, help you and mentor you. Uh, and again, uh, we tailor all of this to your needs in the dioceses. But let me stop now because both of us have been talking for far too long and let's open it up for um, some discussion and questions. Uh, if you have um, a comment or need uh, to ask a question, um, you can uh, jump in or raise your hand on the screen. If there are no questions, if, I can if, always talk more. If there are no questions, I would like to mention um, two other groups that, that we uh, really um, targeted <laughs> for NFP education and catechetical work um, that I think were really uh, assisted us in getting our ministry up and rolling. And um, the first one was our clergy. <laughs> um, 
that that was I, I can recall when uh, the bishop. So it was uh, you know then Bishop Burke, and then we had Bishop uh, Jerry Lestecki, and then we had uh, Bishop William Patrick uh, Callahan. And I can tell you um, with uh, Bishop Jerome and uh, Lestecki, and then Bishop Callahan. Those two were like, you know, just tell us, just tell me when you want to put in that requirement and I'll get her done, you know, and I'm like, okay, thanks, thanks so much, you know, but uh, we, I don't, I don't want this to happen and then have to uh, a war on my hands. Um, and what we actually did is um, we met almost one by one by one with the priests that had the largest um, Axe to grind with the requirement for NFP, and and listened. We listened to them. Why? What you know? What is the reason why you think this would be uh, a a not pastoral idea? You know what is the reason why this this one worked for you? And we listened hard. We we heard all of the uh, roadblocks that they could put out, and one by one, we addressed the roadblocks like cost. That was a big one. The second one was accessibility to the classes. Um, the third one was a timing factor. You know, a lot of people come in, they want to get married in six months. How are we going to get them to do this and buy their dress and blah, 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 all at the same time? So they really challenged us to make NFP education as uh, accessible. And that's why we were one of the first dioceses to really go on a virtual run at it, where we made it possible that at 24 seven, our clients, our couples could access. We also worked hard to keep the cost control and actually uh, offered scholarships. So that would, you know, would be something that would um, work. We, we also trained our priests in um, how to require this with charity. That took a bit of work, you know, so it's not just higher, you know, the iron fist drops on the, you know, the desk of the pastor who says you will do this or else you won't get married in my parish. Well, yeah, that winds up usually being an exit for the couple out of the parish. So we worked with them on how do you require this, you know, and many times it was a matter of um, here, why don't you have them call us? <laughs> we'll help them embrace us a little bit more. We'll work with them on the fine details. But it, it was, um, that was one thing that we, we addressed and I think it made um, a really big difference in, in getting us going. Um, and the other um, one was our pastoral sense with our teachers. Anybody that was teaching within the Diocese of La Crosse, any of our marriage prep couples, we had to work with them on how to love them, despite the fact that most of them were living together, et cetera. How do you respond to that? So that was another whole um, accompaniment piece that we really worked hard on. So it, it, it wasn't that, um, you know, we, um, I hate that the term we were, you know, oh, just be non-judgmental. Um, we taught rather our teachers how to love them forward to something better. Okay. And, and a lot of times it just came with a lot of, um, so when they would, you know, chatter about this is stupid, this is costing me money, everything else say, well, you know, I'm really sorry about that, you know, help me understand why this isn't useful to you. Um, we took calls from people at all hours of the day, we really worked with our, our instructors to be accommodating of uh, of the people that they worked with. We also um, made sure that all of our couples had a call, because again, we were virtual, that the instructors called them and had to have at least four contacts of just chatter, you know, get to know you kind of thing before they would just drop if the couple said, I, we're just not doing this, okay? So we put things in place and I have to say um, that was both, um, eye-opening for the teachers who are usually so gung-ho on fire and you're working with someone who's lackluster about this, you got to kind of temper it back a little bit so that you can move them forward. But that learning to accompany and charity was another big part 
of what we did. So I, I hope that makes sense, but. I see Dominic has his hand up. Yes, I was thinking as both you and Teresa spoke that um, the same principles of evangelization apply here. And that um, there are, we look at multiple pathways for the message. Um, so there's not just one area that we focus on, but over time, you can't do it all at once, but figure out where you're strong, figure out where you're not reaching people, and over time, build that out, such as the priests, for instance, are significant in terms of like a priority, and then parents uh, educating their children, and then also evangelizing the parents themselves, how many of them have been contracepting, you know, in their married life, and how to convert them, and then the other piece was the importance of witness, of people who have experienced what this has changed, how it's changed their lives, and give witness to to others about what that is. Uh, so there's there's just some thoughts I I had as you were speaking. Um, Dominic, I think that's that's a really important thing. It's it's you know again, it's not reinventing the wheel on how to reach someone. It's just using the good history that we've got. You know, and that whole idea of changing uh, a person's headset using love is like, I guess Jesus did it years ago. Maybe we should continue trying. Um, really important. Um, we do have a question um, in the chat um, from uh, Gabriella, and she said, with NFP week and Grandparents Day occurring in July, it can be challenging to connect with Catholic schools on this topic outside of encouraging school to use one of the curriculum options you mentioned. But for a school whose administration is not familiar with NFP and not ready yet to add curriculum, does anyone have any ideas for key moments to reach out to Catholic schools about this topic in lieu of NFP week? Thank you. Gabriella from Indianapolis, one of my favorites. Yeah, uh, I, I could jump in on that one. Uh, Gabriella, um, uh, uh, I think that you can choose any time of the year to offer um, a catechesis to the school teachers. Um, you can uh, either do it one-on-one uh, -on -one with one faculty um, at a time, or you could maybe partner with the Catholic school's office to uh, see what sort of extra uh, um, the continuing education programs that they will often have for Catholic school teachers. I know that when I was uh, a religion teacher in a Catholic high school in New Jersey in the Archdiocese of Newark, Newark New Jersey, we would have once a year um, a time for all the teachers to come together to get whatever education um, they wanted focused in on for us. Uh, I myself have spoken at different diocesan. I remember once in, um, in Texas, we had Father Benedict Rochelle and myself. I think there was even the Dominican Father Father um, Ashley, oh, I can't remember. Um, Dominic, do you remember his name? He was a very well-known theologian at the time, and I'm showing my age. Oh, you're you're muted. Is it Father Benedict Ashley? I'm not That's sure. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they did an entire day on human sexuality, and uh, and church teaching, um, and and they uh, wanted to make sure that their teachers were on the same page. Now, uh, you can imagine some of the teachers were not, and it was difficult and was hard conversations. But but if you create a, a safe format and if you're careful about um, planning things out and um, and trying to do that hard work of what Alice said. Um, listen to what people are saying they think that you're saying or they think what we're rejecting in the church which we're, we're not rejecting anything good we're we're putting forth god's plan for people but um uh, looking at your tasks in a year and your events in a year trying to partner with um, um with other offices in your chancery to see how you can provide this sort of education for your teachers, for your parishes. Uh, you could do it any time of the year you want. Um, and now for something like grandparents, I mean, we all know everybody's out of school in the middle of the summer. Um, in fact, I, I used to always get the complaint of people in the diocese is that, well, people are on vacation in July. Why are you doing NFP week then? 
well, quite honestly, it was the only time of the year that we could focus on because there was so much going on in the um, in the school year, basically, in, in all the parishes and the uh, national calendar that we would have in the church. And obviously for us in natural family planning, July 25th is the anniversary date of Humana Vitae, and it kind of piggybacks with uh, the feasts of St. Anne and Joachim, which we always use uh, to focus also on infertile couples and to raise up uh, that uh, in our uh, work that we do with NFP. Um, Grandparents Day, nationally speaking, in a secular world, um, happens uh, the first the first weekend after Labor Day. Um, that's from the 1970s, I think. Uh, President, uh, for, former President Jimmy Carter was the one who um, established that. Um, and so we'll see what we're going to do in the church. We we do have a formal re request in uh, at the bishops' conference to see if maybe we could transfer our church celebration of grandparents to September, but we'll see. Either way, just because we say NFP week is here or grandparents week is there, whatever, we know that these are all important things to raise up every now and then throughout the year. And, um, and with your- And Teresa, just okay. to kind of in that context, just to insert real quick, uh, National Marriage Week is a, is a particular time where these principles can be highlighted. That's um, right. I think, again, uh, there are probably places in the year and uh, liturgical celebrations uh, that we really ought to spread it out and keep reminding people. And it's not just one week, <laughs> you know, That's or right. even one, one opportunity. That's right. Uh, uh, when it comes to education, anybody who's got an educational background, you know, multiple educational interventions are, are what you need to really remind people and help people learn and help people understand. So yes. Let me let me add a couple of comments to this discussion when it comes to the schools and to your religious ed programs. Be aware that your schools uh, by and large will follow state mandates on what is and isn't taught in the school so that they can have their accreditation and, cre and credits can, will be covered uh, and forwarded for you know, towards college, et cetera. It is important uh, for you to take a look at curriculums uh, and what is included in the curriculums like science when it comes to, to human biology, um, to make sure that the correct knowledge that comes from NFP-based science is actually included. Because many times uh, we were shocked to find in many of our textbooks that the textbooks were, um, you know, including information on contraception and that, that teachers were doing presentation on contraception and they were not including natural methods or if they did, they considered it um, uh, very uh, inadequate and not necessary. Um, so there, without doing presentations about NFP, et cetera, uh, you can do a lot simply by reviewing the curriculums and asking for uh, what is presented and how is it presented and is it presented as an alternative or is it presented as good science? I think that's one important thing. I think a second uh, curricular area that um, is important to look at and that would be um, health and wealth and uh, well-being. Uh, because all, especially middle and high schools, like here in the state of Wisconsin, somewhere between seventh and ninth grade, there have to be, I think it is one or two semesters where they have to take that information. Um, how well formed is the person training this and what are they presenting on this information? So I think that's another important thing for you to, um, uh, to consider and look at. A third area would be social sciences. Um, social sciences uh, tend to put forward an agenda of social engineering, and it's it's really good to take a peek and see what's being taught in those areas. Um, and then the fourth area is how do they collaborate between religion curriculums with these other areas? Um, so how do they make the theology of the body available not only in religion class, but how can that be paired also in health class? How can that be extended into your social sciences? How can that be um, pulled forward into your um, into your your science and biology, et cetera? So so really look at that. And I have to tell you that can be very difficult. Um, but I think it is important uh, for you to 
keep that in mind. And then the last thing that I will say in our diocese, uh, we work tirelessly. And even though I am retired, my kids will tell you that's not true because I still go back and do things. But I still present to all the new teacher, the, our new teachers that come into our diocesan schools must go through a, a curricular program. And I am a presenter in that program and will maintain that as long as they'll allow me in the door to talk about God's plan for human sexuality, God's plan for marriage, et cetera. That they, you know, because that has to be done because a lot of our new teachers come to us with either they're not Catholic, they may be Christian, but their understanding and formation of the bigger picture uh, uh, may need some enhancements. So they still bring me in and that's a, a three hour presentation that I do. Uh, we had a question uh, asking about curriculum, uh, especially for homeschoolers, because a lot of um, uh, Catholic parents have uh, decided to do um, homeschooling and, um, and, and there are published curricula out there. Uh, I can tell you in terms of um, Christian anthropology, and um, human sexuality, there are several things. Uh, I would take a look at Rua Woods. Uh, their curricula is just magnificent um, because again, they do it through uh, beauty and through virtue and, um, uh, and, and they get into the nitty gritty, but, um, but they have, I, I, I wanna say they are still working on their high school curriculum, I think. Um, but the grammar school curriculum is uh, published and, and very good. Then there's also Tobit, um, Theology of the Body Educational or Evangelization Team, I think it's called, out of Texas. They have curricula for um, grammar school uh, children. Uh, Ascension Press has Theology of the Body for uh, Adolescents. Um, and uh, as I said, um, FEM, which is an NFP provider, has uh, Teen Femme, which is uh, based on natural law. Um, and um, there are other things out there, but you can send me an email and, and we can talk about the specific needs. Again, I would say that um, this may seem overwhelming because there's so much, but don't think you have to do it all by yourself. Get your team together and take, take some time to uh, discuss your diocese, to identify strengths and weaknesses, to um, figure out who you can contact to partner with. Because again, why natural family planning? We're not a hospital, right? Uh, although we do have Catholic hospitals, um, but we're doing, we're, the church is providing natural family planning ministry in the diocese. The actual methods are just tools. They're ethical tools for couples to use in marriage. But the information that we have from that, the science, is critically needed at this point in time. I mean, my God, people are forgetting what it means to be a man and a woman. And, 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 uh, and natural family planning stands on the biology of maleness and femaleness, human reproduction. Uh, and then church teaching tells us, I mean, it's right from scripture that God made them male and female and that he commanded them to be fruitful and multiply. It is a blessing, it's not a curse. And that marriage is another blessing, probably the highest blessing that, that God could give a man and a woman because it is the one flesh union that the church has come to understand, uh, reflects his love for humanity, and in particular, as Christians, Christ's love for the church. Uh, all of this is wrapped together. And, and if we teach about the human person and we teach about the maleness and the femaleness as gifts from God and fertility, um, that very unique gift and, and sex itself as being something not to be ashamed of, uh, but not to be over eroticized, right? Um, or used um, uh, to sell products and, and to mislead our children in thinking that it has no meaning. Sex has meaning uh, and we want what's best for our children. Uh, so to, to understand the vocation of marriage within that context and to find those ways to keep teaching it, it can only strengthen marriage ministry and certainly it'll integrate NFP ministry, uh, we hope. Uh, and I think that we should uh, 
uh, entertain maybe one last question because we're now at an hour and, uh, and we don't want to take all of your time here. Well, if there are no further questions, Julia, I hand it back to you. Terrific. Well, thank you both. Thanks to all of you, um, Teresa, Alice, and Dominic, for all of these um, insights into the importance of natural family planning. And I'd like to close us with a prayer. Beautiful. Glory be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you again for joining all of us. And Julia, thank you so much for having Alice and I. Dominic, I'm so grateful that you joined in as well. God bless.